Hi, you're watching Cooking with Diane. I'm Diane, and today I want to talk about how to knead bread dough. I'm not going to walk you through a whole bread recipe. I'm just going to focus on the kneading part. If you're kind of new to baking bread and you've just started following a few bread recipes, chances are the recipe at some point says knead the dough for five to ten minutes. I've taught a lot of bread and pasta making classes which involve kneading, and I do find that a lot of people struggle with this. It's not necessarily intuitive. Sometimes I see people trying to just give their dough a massage. Sometimes I see people just whacking it on the table. So I'm going to show you the most effective and efficient way to knead your dough so you can develop the gluten in the flour, which is the purpose of kneading it at all. No matter what you do though, this will involve getting your hands dirty. So the first thing I always do if I know I'm going to be making bread is I do take off my rings just so I don't have to get dough out of them later. I only do this if I know there's somewhere really safe I can put them where I'm not going to forget about them and I'm not going to lose them. So next I'm just going to show you a close up on my board how I mix and knead my bread dough. So I'm making some focaccia dough today. So my recipe calls for all purpose flour, yeast, there's some sour sourdough starter in there, there's water, there's olive oil, there's salt, there's a little bit of honey. Your recipe might have some of these things or all of them or slightly different things, but chances are it has a flour, a liquid, and some yeast. Whatever your recipe has, measure them all into a bowl. And we're gonna start by using the spoon, but we're going to move into using our hands pretty quickly. But you can use the spoon just to stir everything together until it might get a little too stiff and it's sticking to the spoon a lot at which point you can ditch the spoon. Just make sure you get any sticky dough off the spoon. So you can see our dough is not mixed all the way. There's still lots of flour in the bottom of the bowl. That's totally normal. It takes flour a while to get really hydrated and absorb all of the liquid in the recipe. So try not to add extra flour or water right away until you really can see what the dough is like. And that won't happen until a little while for now after we've kneaded it. Once you're at this point where it's like 80% mixed, we're just gonna dump out everything onto the counter and mix it with our hands. This is going to be the start of the kneading process. If you have a plastic bowl scraper like this, it can be really helpful for getting all of that sticky flour out of the bowl. But if you don't have one, just use your hands. And set the soot bowl aside for now, but you're going to use it to put the finished dough in later. So now we have kind of a floury, doughy, shaggy mess on our board. We're just going to start kind of folding it in on itself just to work all of the flour into the dough. And this might take a couple minutes in and of itself, but this isn't really the kneading process. This is just giving the flour time to absorb all of the liquid in the recipe. So now there's still some crumbles on my board. I'm not gonna worry about those too much, but for the most part, I have one cohesive ball of dough, but it's all shaggy and craggy and there's like bits of flour on the outside. I would not call this a smooth round of dough. Now we can start the kneading process. If your dough is really, really sticky at this point, you can dust your hands and your boards with a little bit of flour. This is called bench flour, so it can be really helpful. But you don't want to overdo it because adding extra flour to the recipe that you measured out will change the texture of your dough. So to knead the dough, I'm not going to use my fingers. That's just going to give me arthritis. I'm going to use the heel of my palm, and I'm going to use it to push the dough away from me. A lot of the work is actually coming from my core and not from my arm. So that's what the dough looks like once it's been pushed away from me. It has a palm print in it. Then from the side, I'm going to fold it over, turn it 90 degrees, and bring it back towards me. And I do this at a diagonal because that's most comfortable for the way I'm standing. So you push the dough away, fold it in half, turn it 90 degrees, bring it back towards you. Push it away, fold it, turn it, bring it back towards you. And you keep doing this 
until the dough is smooth and soft and springy. And that usually takes about five to 10 minutes if you're doing it by hand. So just be patient, set a timer, put on some music, and you'll be able to see the dough transform as you work with it. At some point, the dough is going to start feeling a little bit softer and stickier if it was feeling floury before, because the flour has truly hydrated and absorbed all of the liquid. And then it'll start picking up all of the little extra flour on your board. And if one of your arms gets tired, just switch to the other arm. So now I've kneaded my dough for about six to eight minutes. And it's looking where, it's looking pretty much the way I want it to look. It kind of naturally forms itself into a circle and it's smooth on the outside. It should be really soft and smooth on the outside, kind of like a ball of mozzarella is what it always makes me think of. You can also test the gluten content to see whether you've really developed the gluten in the dough to see whether it's kind of stretchy and bouncy. So I do something I call the poke test where I poke gently on the surface of the dough and the dough should bounce back. It doesn't have to bounce back super fast, but it shouldn't leave the imprint of my finger in the dough for a long time. You can see it's not bouncing back like 100%, but it's definitely not leaving a deep fingerprint in the dough. I can put it back in my bowl. And your recipe might say to put it in an oiled bowl, which just means drizzle a little bit of oil in the bowl, which will keep your dough from sticking to the bowl when you're trying to get it out later. So I really get oil all over one side of the dough and then turn it over. So there's oil on both sides of the dough. And there's no need to waste your plastic wrap on this. Just put a nice heavy kitchen towel over top. You can even use a slightly damp kitchen towel if you're worried about your dough dry, drying out. So now you're ready to move on with the rest of your recipe. But you do need to clean your counter. I really recommend using a bench scraper. If you don't have one of these, a stiff spatula will work pretty well too. So I use the scraper to really scrape any bits of stuck on dough off of my board. And once you've got the big stuff off, you do wanna give it a good scrub with a wet, soapy sponge to make sure you to make sure you melt off any stuck on flour. And then just wipe it dry with a clean kitchen towel. And your counter should be good to go for the rest of the day. And don't forget to put your rings back on. That's all for kneading bread dough. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.